Oh, Shalom Rastafari. I want to touch just briefly on Cointel Pro. Watching a very interesting uh, video. Um, very good, and I, I, I give thanks. Uh, it's called Cointel Pro: The Fear of a Black Planet. Even though on some of the, um, you could say issues that we touch on it is somewhat deficient on that because a lot of folks don't recognize COINTELPRO the big picture right so when we're talking about this particular memo this is what most folks focus on right here this particular memo right here that was issued by J. Edgar Hoover right his COINTELPRO which actually means and you can see it right here it means counterintelligence program by counterintelligence. That means it's against one's knowing the truth. And therefore, the big picture just, you know, began to dawn on I and I that most people think it's just about blacks in America, even though that is one of the main targets, right, to stop the rise of a messiah or stop the rise of a black messiah who could do what? who could unify and electrify the militant black nationalist movement. And it touches on a couple of key names right here, um, Martin Luther King, um, Stokely Carmichael, um, Elijah Muhammad. But when you have to look at COINTELPRO, the big picture, right? And now looking at COINTELPRO, the big picture, we have to see that the big picture, this, that's just COINTELPRO in America. But what most folks have not recognized, especially in the Israelitish and the black movement, is that the real target of COINTELPRO is Haile Selassie, the true Negus, the king of kings, right, at the head of the imperial guard. Because who was he up against? Or who was against him? It was this guy right here, this tin pot Caesar. He shall challenge even the prince of princes, Benito Mussolini, the tin pot Caesar heaped scorn on a fallen Ethiopia. And so many of the truly well-meaning uh, brothers and sisters out there totally dismiss the role and the relevance of Edomawi Haile Selassie of Haile Selassie the first. And then it, it really began to dawn on me that even these statements, you know, concerning what his majesty said about um, whether he's Christ or not Christ. Of course, the popular media is that he denied it. But if you listen to the interview yourself, you'll see that's not even the point of what he addressed. This is the Messiah, the anointed, the king of kings. Let's recognize that. This is not a vote. It's not about you going and voting for who's the king of the kings, right? The king of kings is the king of kings. So we got to recognize that most folks are not even dealing with the big picture, right? The big picture, the big picture, right? This rematch, right, between Caesar, right, or Caesar's Christ. This is who Benito Mussolini was, and it gets even much deeper than that when you put into prophetics, right, the whole Lateran Treaty, how that connects with Ethiopia, you know, the true story of Ethiopia. But see, blacks in America, a lot of the so-called revolutionary and, and Afrocentric and militant Israelites, they dismiss <laughs> to their own shame and utter destruction the true significance of this rematch between Caesar and the Messiah, the anointed king of Israel, the king of kings of Ethiopia, the return of the Negus. They don't recognize this real connection. And this is where we have to do a little bit more um, investigation into the half of the story. Right? This is the half of the story that has not been told. So the real big picture right here how this all connects. And so when we then return and look at over here, when we look at COINTELPRO, right, counterintelligence, this means that the majority of what we've been led to believe or believe concerning Haile Selassie I 
concerning Ethiopia, concerning the so-called creeping coup against his imperial majesty, are lies. And most folks don't want to recognize that. So they'll say, oh, COINTELPRO, they lied on the black movements and nationalist movements, labeling that hate groups and killing them. And then they will look at Ethiopia and they will deny the truth, right? Deny the reality, you know? Or they'll say, oh, if Haile Selassie is, is king of kings, why was there a famine? <laughs> Foolish people. A bunch of foolish people. Well, how come Ethiopia is so poor? First shall be last and the last shall be first. How come they're so poor? Right? How come so so what it is is to divide the big picture of Cointel Pro basically shows there's a Cointel Pro in the East, right, concerning Hala Salasi, the true Negus and King of Kings, right? And then there's the Cointel Pro in the West, but most don't look at the big picture. They don't recognize, they know a lot of the counterintelligence that was used, right, to divide and so-called conquer. And some say, well, well, if you're not divided already, you can't be divided and conquered. Okay, yeah, yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but let's look at the reality, right, to stop the rise of a Messiah. You see what I'm saying? Of a Messiah. So this is this is the double-head eagle, right? When we look at the double-head eagle, this is the West, the COINTELPRO, Edgar J. Hoover's counterintelligence program, FBI memo, right? But we know who they work for. Just pull out a dollar. Pull out a dollar bill, and you see the Holy See. The eye will be seeing you, and the eye is seeing you. Right? But we know that that only began because of these events that took place over here. How soon they forget. How soon they forget. You see, and the counterintelligence, it plays on that. It plays on you forgetting. So now you got these foolish Negroes who now, because of the COINTELPRO, heaps gone on a fallen Ethiopia. Yet he is who he is. A little bit more to come on this particular subject matter, brothers and sisters. This will be the first um, maybe installation in COINTELPRO, the big picture. We'll follow up with something dealing with public enemy number one, COINTELPRO's public enemy number one, Haile Selassie the first.